The following is a paid program. Here's Dr. Gil Lederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo, surgery, or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, first in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate, all custom tailored for you. Call 212 Choices, 212 Choices for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices, 212 Choices. Welcome, everybody. It's the Radio Surgery Show with Dr. Gil Lederman, MD, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board certified radiation oncologist who brings you the latest cancer treatment news, interviewing world-renowned cancer experts, delving to special cases, and, of course, answering your questions. I'm Rob Redstone, broadcasting from the WOR studios in the heart of New York City. And now, please welcome... Dr. Lederman. Hi, good evening. It's Gil Lederman. We hope you're all well. Thank you for tuning in. We have Mike and Noah in the control booth. They're ready to take your calls if you wish. They're at 1 800. What the heck's number? 321 0710, right? 1 800 321 0710. How the heck could we ever lose a W O R number? It's the center of the universe. So here we are. It's a live program, and we're talking about. Real issues, and the idea is to talk about issues that can help your life and maybe save your life and change your life in a good way. So we're uninhibited. We're live. We're talking about things, really most events from the last week, and that includes patients, news, updates, and cases. So the first is a caller that just called me a few minutes ago, a caller whose grandfather and father has kidney cancer. The grandfather's a bit older and he has heart failure. He's got cancer that's eating at the kidney. Obviously, he's too sick to have surgery to remove the kidney or part of the kidney. And he would like to know, what is radiosurgery? Would radiosurgery work for him? And I tried to explain that we've treated about 20,000 patients We were the first in America, the first in the Western Hemisphere, the first in New York to perform fractionated stereotactic radiosurgery exactly for a case like this. Exactly. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm a radiation oncologist. I'm board certified in both. And there's just certain diseases like this that wouldn't respond to chemo, that wouldn't respond to standard radiation. The man couldn't have surgery. And what's he supposed to do? Go silently in the night? No. We know that when we give focused treatment for kidney cancer, and if you look up kidney cancer and radiation in most textbooks, it would say, oh, kidney cancer is radio-resistant. It doesn't work, radiation. But in fact, that's with standard radiation. When we focus the beam on the cancer, which is what we do, that's what radio surgery is all about, to focus on the cancer and not hurt healthy tissues, we can dial up the dose, and as we dial up the dose, the radiobiology principles change. And in fact, kidney cancer is one of the most sensitive cancers, along with melanoma and sarcoma, which we'll talk about later in the evening. It's one of the most sensitive tumors to radiosurgery. So we're able to hit the cancer, even in the middle of the kidney, and generally not hurt the kidney, and stop the cancer. Our success rate And unlike for chemo, where they talk about for six weeks or 12 weeks, for the rest of the life of the patient is about 90%, which means we can stop or shrink that cancer. And then the family asked, well, do you have a patient you could, they could talk to, a testimonial? I said, well, 
Number one, we have the data. We have the data of thousands of patients. So the data is really more important than any one particular patient. But I actually was thinking of a woman that we treated 15 years ago with kidney cancer, almost the exact same case. She comes in every six months. I see her. She's in perfect health, no side effects, fully functional. She has both kidneys. Both kidneys are functioning well and no evidence of cancer. So when they ask if they can talk to a patient, I'll ask this woman if she's willing to talk to this family. But that's what radio surgery is about. It's a new option for people that thought there were no options, that they thought they were out of luck. And then they knock on our door. So that's the kind of work that we do. Another caller this afternoon called me and said, well, I was going to send my dad to you, but then he asked his primary doctor, and the primary doctor said, no, nothing will work. Don't go there. The whole point of a fresh second opinion is for a patient to come in and have a fresh second opinion. If you go to the same old doctor, you're going to get the same old answer. He's most likely, sad to say, will probably state to you, he's thought of everything and he knows best, and that's the way it is. Well, sometimes each doctor, each one has their own experiences and when they have their own experiences and their own technology, they may be able to help you. And that's why a fresh second opinion is so critical. So you get up, make an appointment, call us. Our number is 212-CHOICES because we really believe you have choices. You have choices in your life. And you may not know of all the choices. And unfortunately, your doctor may not know of all the choices. He may know things that I don't know. And I may know things that he doesn't know or she doesn't know. And so that's the point of a fresh second opinion. So for this family whose father and grandfather has kidney cancer with congestive heart failure, radio surgery doesn't affect the heart, the lungs, the bone marrow. You don't lose your hair. Usually it's five treatments. Each treatment is about 15 minutes. You come in and get the treatment and go home. We just finished treating a woman, and I've talked about her on the show in the last few weeks, a woman who's 100 years old. She's 100 years old. She was diagnosed with bladder cancer when she was 95. And she said to herself and her family, look, I'm 95. Why should I care about bladder cancer? Fair enough, I guess, maybe. And the years go by, 96, 97, 98. And now she's 100. And all of a sudden, she's losing her blood. She lost half of her blood in the urine. This bladder cancer is growing, eating through the wall of the bladder, eating through blood vessel, and she's ready to die. Her daughter finds out about us, brings her in. She said, can you do radio surgery? We staged her up, which is what I like to do to know exactly where the cancer is. We staged her up. The cancer hadn't traveled. It was still just in the wall of the bladder. Can you believe that? In five years, it never traveled. We told her about the risks, told her about the benefits, told her about the options. She chose to get treated. We treated her in the Electa stereotactic frame, a non-invasive technology, which we pioneered. We were the first in America to do so. We non-invasively attacked the cancer. We hit it non-invasively, no cutting, no bleeding. Did one treatment, the bleeding slowed down. Second treatment, each treatment's 15 minutes, each treatment's outpatient. And after the second treatment, all her bleeding stopped. And really, starting then, her blood count started going up. She had no significant symptoms. She was doing well. And she was obviously grateful. Now she's had the five treatments. Each treatment was 15 minutes. She's done with the treatments. And she's done very well. So the whole point of this talk is that she probably would have died if it wasn't for radio surgery. She was 100 years old. She wasn't going to have cancer surgery on her bladder. She, chemo wouldn't have worked. So there was a case where radio surgery came to the rescue. So you may want to get, if you have cancer and the treatment's not working or the treatment's not tolerated, you may want to think about a fresh second opinion for your case. We have a lot of other cases tonight, and again, we're taking your calls at 1-800-321-0710, 1-800-321-0710. We had some callers, and I know Ron called about prostate cancer. If you want to call back, we're taking your calls, and 
they're on the line. So let's talk to let's talk to uh, Ron about prostate cancer. Hello. Hi, Ron. How are you? Oh, I don't know. You're going to tell me. Okay, that's like one one psychiatrist said to the other, "You're okay. How am I?" <laughs> I uh, I have uh, been diagnosed as I've got prostate cancer, and it's uh, about. On a scale of ten, the guy says it's somewhere between three and four, slow growing, and it's not. It's located in one area. Uh -huh. the Was it a Gleason so, seven, a Gleason three plus four? Something like that. It was okay. PSA of four. Uh, PSA, PSA four. Bad in there, yeah. Okay. okay. At any rate, I said to the guy, "Look, if you were me, what would you do?" He said, "I wouldn't really do much or if anything, except I would watch it very carefully, and if it started to move, then I would start to do something." But as it stands now. I would just sort of like hold off because if we do anything now, you know, the quality of your life is going to diminish. Well, you don't, well, you don't know, know that. What, what is your age? age? I'm 73. No, I'll be 74 in 30 days. Are you Are in good you? health? Uh, I can outwork most guys in their 40s and 50s. So you're in good shape, no heart disease, lung disease, other yeah, tumors, I, cancers? I got managed high blood pressure. All, mm -hmm. my, all my specs are within the window, including mm -hmm. cholesterol. I can well, still, first I of all... There's several interesting papers, one of which I just came across. Uh, one's called Treatment Versus Watchful Waiting. And it actually applies to exactly someone like you, and there's many men out there like you. And unfortunately, a lot of the doctors haven't read this paper, and it didn't get a lot of publicity. But uh, Dr. Bill Axelson took 695 men with prostate cancer, and randomly allocated these 695 men to watchful waiting, like you, watchful waiting, or treatment. Now, they started the study in 1989, and they continued it until 2012. So they continued the study for 23 years. And guess what? The group that had treatment had a significant extension of their life and less death. There were two equal groups. The group that had treatment over these 23 years had only 63 deaths. The group that were watchful waiting had 99 deaths. So they had 50% more deaths in the group that were watchful waiting than in the group that got treated. So it might be uh, something for you to consider when you make a decision. Do you really want to be in the watchful waiting, just waiting for the cancer to grow? Uh, or do you want to get treated? And then if you look at the treatment data, and again, we have a booklet on prostate cancer, which I'd be happy to send to you if you call us after the show. If you go to page 14 of that, it's a graph, and it's a graph of patients who we treat versus are treated in other centers with other treatment like surgery. So for Gleason 7 cancer, Success rate with radical surgery in the best hands in America is about 60% at five years. Our data is 90%, and it's done without cutting out your prostate. It's done with treatment in a stereotactic frame and some seeds put in the, the prostate, so it's easy treatment to tolerate. It gives you a 90% chance of being cancer-free. The quality of life is excellent, and when we're talking about quality of life. For most men, that means sexual function and urinary function. The vast majority of our men keep their sexual function, and really nearly everyone keeps their urinary function. So it's unlike radical surgery where most men lose their sexual function and urinary function. So I would at least invite you to come in. I'd like to show you the papers and to discuss with you why you might want to be treated because watchful waiting may not be so great. And there's other studies, too, that are coming out now in the watchful waiting that are showing that people that don't get treated live less than people who do get treated. Hey, uh, at a certain point in time, you know, life sucks anyhow. The question is, I'd rather die, uh, um, you know, in a car wreck than I would be sitting in a nursing home going south. Right. Uh, that kind of stuff. So but to, but let's look at it the other way. Prostate cancer is a cancer that when it spreads, spreads to the bones, it causes pain and suffering, and it's incurable. You know, right now, your cancer is localized. So if your cancer is localized and treatable in an easy manner with an excellent quality of life, wouldn't that make more sense than wait, waiting for metastasis and death? Three years ago, I had, I had ocular melanoma. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I went to Sloan. I fried my eye. Now mm-hmm. I'm blind in the eye. Still mm-hmm. have it. I got some light issues that I can see and uh, barely, like 80, mm-hmm. 10%. Uh, but what's up with that 